Homo neanderthalensis, a native of Europe's primeval forests, is sometimes referred to as our ancient brothers and sisters. Genetic analysis shows that there were at least two distinct geographical groups, northern or inland Europe and the Mediterranean. Some of us like to romanticize Neanderthals as peaceful, noble savages who lived in harmony with nature, but they were human and had complex lives. Evidence from several sites indicates a geographic and cultural divide, and possibly evidence of violent contact. When compared to previously sequenced Neanderthal genomes, one Neanderthal genome from near the French Riviera most closely resembled an individual excavated at Forbes Quarry in Gibraltar, and the researchers speculate that Gibraltar's population migrated to France. Could this lineage be an archaic, isolated remnant, whereas the classic Neanderthals, such as La Chapelle, we know so well. This means there was a Mediterranean population of Neanderthals whose population spanned from the most southern tip of Spain all the way to the Rhone Valley in France. As Dr. Ludivac Slimak mentioned, there appears to have been a cultural divide between Neanderthals on one side of the Rhone River and on the other, which could indicate a divide between the northern or inland Neanderthals and the Mediterranean or southern Neanderthals. Geographically, the Rhone River was never an impassable barrier. Even in the late Pleistocene, it could have been forded or crossed by raft in its upper reaches, then followed downstream to its deltas. However, culturally and behaviorally, it appears to have served as a strong divider. Thorin was most closely related to the Forbes Quarry female from Gibraltar, known as Nana, who shared a clade with the Neanderthals from Galleria de las Estatuas, also in Spain, and had a weak but significant signal of excess allele sharing with Thorin, consistent with their closely related mitochondrial sequences. It is unclear whether this population was only locally distributed in the Middle Rhone Valley, or whether the Thorin lineage was more widely distributed throughout Europe, as suggested by the Gibraltar connections. Both the Thorin and Gibraltar Neanderthals have a more ancient lineage, matching to Neanderthals who lived over 100,000 years ago, but these Neanderthals lived around 50,000 years ago. The genetic relationship found between Thorin and the low-coverage genome of Forbes Quarry suggests that the Gibraltar Neanderthals were part of a larger southwest European metapopulation raising the possibility of a much later dating for those individuals than previously thought. Nonetheless, anthropologists believe that Neanderthals were capable of forming geographically expansive ethno-linguistic tribes encompassing up to 850 individuals based on the transport of obsidian up to 300 kilometers from the source when compared to trends seen in obsidian transfer distance and tribe size in modern hunter-gatherers. This is around half the size of comparable modern hunter-gatherer groups in similar environments of 1,500 individuals. Knowing that Neanderthal communities were small and insular may be key to understanding their extinction, as isolation is generally thought to be a disadvantage for population fitness. It's always a good thing for a population to be in contact with other populations. When you are isolated for a long time, you limit the genetic variation that you have, which means you have less ability to adapt to changing environments and competition from other groups. And it also limits you socially because you're not sharing knowledge or evolving as a population. Consider a relic population akin to Neanderthals from 100,000 years ago living in southern refugees such as the Rhone Valley or Gibraltar. Their DNA links this lineage to Nana from Gibraltar, nearly 2,000 kilometres away, implying that the Mediterranean range was once much larger but shrank as classic Neanderthals and modern humans dominated. These archaic Neanderthals stuck to traditional methods. Neronian tools lack the finesse of chattel Peronian blades, implying less innovation. However, morphologically, we are on shakier ground. The Thorin remains form Grotta Mandarin, a jaw and teeth, 
do not stand out as different species from classic Neanderthal bones. However, subtle clues, such as his lineage's possible ties to earlier, more archaic Neanderthals from Gibraltar, point to a retained ruggedness, perhaps less refined skulls or bodies, as opposed to the classic's slightly more modern features, possibly softened by interbreeding with modern humans. The Gibraltar skull of Forbes Quarry is one of the most significant Neanderthal remains ever discovered, shedding light on the morphology, behaviour and genetics of modern humans' extinct relatives. The skull was discovered in Gibraltar in 1848, many years before the well-known Neanderthal discoveries in Germany, but its significance was not immediately apparent. The relative robustness of the skull matches more ancient Neanderthals that lived 100,000 years ago. The skull was discovered at Forbes Quarry, which is on the northern face of the Rock of Gibraltar. This discovery was significant because it took place nearly a decade before the first known Neanderthal specimen was discovered in the Neander Valley in 1856. Despite its significance, the skull received little attention for several years until Neanderthal fossils sparked scientific interest. She offers a valuable glimpse into pre-contact Neanderthal populations that were isolated but adaptable to the Iberian Peninsula's distinct environmental conditions. The skull belonged to a mature adult female, commonly known as the Gibraltar woman. Her cranial features reveal a robust structure with a low, sloping forehead, prominent brow ridges, and a large nasal aperture, all of which are typical of Neanderthal anatomy. This discovery was critical in recognizing Neanderthals as a separate hominin species from modern Homo sapiens, albeit capable of interbreeding. The Gibraltar woman, who lived on the southern edge of the Neanderthal range, may have had an intermediate phenotype, with olive or moderately dark skin. In addition to her skin tone, the Gibraltar woman may have had dark brown or black hair, which is common in populations that have adapted to greater sun exposure. Her Neanderthal face would have been framed by her long hair, whether dark or auburn, giving her a distinct yet familiar appearance. While most discussions centre on skin and hair colour, Neanderthal genetic evidence has also hinted at eye colour. Some Neanderthals carry gene variants associated with lighter eye colours, such as blue or hazel. Darker eye colours like brown or amber were probably more common. Nonetheless, if the Gibraltar woman had darker pigmentation overall, she could have had dark brown eyes to complement her hair and skin tone. The Gibraltar Neanderthal woman's potential skin and hair colour were most likely determined by a complex interplay of genetic and environmental factors that geneticists are still working to understand. Whatever her appearance, the Gibraltar woman is an enthralling example of a population that thrived on the southern edge of the Neanderthal range, demonstrating resilience and adaptability in a changing Stone Age landscape. You can even imagine her wandering the countryside and swimming in the sea, naked as a monkey, on warm Mediterranean summer days. Moreover, the Gibraltar Neanderthal skull provides insight into the morphology, genetics and environment of Neanderthals in southern Spain. Her interactions with other Neanderthals demonstrate the interconnectedness of Neanderthal populations and genetic heritage. These findings aid in reconstructing Neanderthals' adaptive strategies for survival in a difficult and volatile environment. Gibraltar, located at the southern tip of the Iberian Peninsula, may have been one of the last refugees for Neanderthals, especially as Homo sapiens spread throughout Europe. Genetic evidence suggests that the Gibraltar population, like other Neanderthals, experienced demographic pressure and decline near the end of the Stone Age, most likely as a result of competition with Homo sapiens and other factors. Indeed, archaeologists in northern Spain discovered the remains of a family of 12 Neanderthals, 
who were murdered 49,000 years ago. According to the researchers, the markings on the bones clearly indicate cannibal activity and the group was most likely killed by their peers. Researchers examined the mandibles of the Neanderthal remains from El Cidron in Spain, revealing significant physical differences between those from northern and southern Europe. The analysis revealed north-south variations, with southern European Neanderthals having broader faces and taller lower facial heights. This revealed an astonishing north-south morphological gradient and provides insight into the typical southern European Neanderthal facial shape. They all show signs of cannibalism, with cut marks on many bones, including skulls and mandibles. The long bones have been fragmented to extract the marrow, so all of the cannibalism signs described in other Neanderthal sites are present in all of these individuals. The assertion that the group was a family is based on an examination of their mitochondrial DNA, which is genetic material found within animal cells and passed down through the female line. The genetic data showed that the three adult males in the group had the same maternal lineage, but the three adult females had different maternal origins. According to the researchers, at least in this Neanderthal family, the women came from outside the group while the men remained within the family group after reaching maturity. This model of patrilocality is widespread among modern humans, with men staying at within their home group in many societies around the world. Morphologically, the El Cidron Neanderthals have a large number of cold-adapted features, despite the fact that some traits place the sample on the edge of Neanderthal variability. The integration of L. Cedron human mandibles into the larger Neanderthal sample reveals a north-south geographic pattern. The cave is located in the northern region, and southern Neanderthals have very different facial profiles, as mentioned. Could this be evidence of conflict between the northern and southern Neanderthal groups? Could the Neanderthals of Thorin and Nana's group murdered these northern Neanderthals we can only speculate. El Cidron's bone assemblage is almost entirely composed of Neanderthal human remains, with 13 individuals identified. El Cidron has seven adults, three males and four females, three adolescents aged 12 to 15, two males and one female, two juveniles aged 5 to 9, one male and one of unknown gender, and one infant. Each skeletal element is present. Dental examinations show that the adults were all relatively young at the time of death. Mitochondrial DNA analysis supports the hypothesis that the 13 individuals form a family group. Seven of the 13 individuals share the same mitochondrial DNA haplotype, while three of the four adult females have different lineages. The younger juvenile and infant share mitochondrial DNA with one of the adult females, so they were most likely her offspring. Thus, the men were all related, but the women were from outside the group. This suggests that the Neanderthal family had a patrilocal residence pattern. The out-of-Africa theory regards the transition into Neanderthals as a failure, this flawed leap could have contributed to their extinction around 40,000 years ago. Although this leap was an improvement over their predecessors, as evolutionary leaps are supposed to show, the Neanderthals did not appear to be built for the future in the same way that modern humans are. In other words, the Neanderthals' evolutionary leap from the last common ancestor was incompatible with successful evolution and their extinction was an unavoidable result of evolution according to the dominant theory. With that tantalizing statement, we'll let you ponder the mysteries of human history. Until next time, be curious and ask questions. Please subscribe, share, and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos.